Now that we've calculated the mean and the standard deviation, we can go ahead and calculate something called a z-score or a standardized score. Now one important assumption about z-scores is that they're what's called normally distributed. So what that means is we have a distribution of z-scores and they're normal in shape. In other words, it's unimodal, perfectly symmetric, and all three measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and mode, are all the same. And usually in a z-distribution, all of those measures of central tendency are at zero. So let's say that we're dealing with IQ scores. Okay? And let's say that we know that from an IQ score distribution, the mean is 100, and the standard deviation is 10. Further, let's assume that we draw somebody at random from the population and measure their IQ and find out that it is 105. In other words, their raw score, or X, is 105. The formula to calculate a z-score from this information is z equals the raw score, or x, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation. Now conceptually, what this formula means is how far is this raw score away from the mean in standard deviations? How many standard deviations is it either above or below the mean? So once we have this, we can plug in all these numbers into this formula, and we get 105 minus 100, which is the mean, and we divide by the standard deviation, which is 10. That equates to 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5. If we wanted, we could plot this on this z distribution. It might be right about there. And then we could calculate a percentile rank. Okay. And we have these z tables telling us what z score is associated with what percentage of this distribution at or below that score. So if we shaded in this entire distribution up until that score, that would tell us the percentile rank, or how much of the distribution is at or below that score. The same idea behind standardized tests such as the GRE and the SAT. Lastly, we can rearrange this to calculate a raw score if we know the mean and standard deviation of the population it was drawn from and we know the z score. In other words, x is unknown and we have to solve for it. So x equals question mark. And let's say we had somebody that we knew had a z-score of 1.5. What we need to do with this equation right here is isolate x. So first we can multiply both sides by sd to make it cancel out. And then add by m on both sides in order to isolate x. So what this will look like is x equals sd times the z-score plus the mean, or m. So in this example, we can just fill in those numbers right here, and it's going to be 10 times 1.5 plus the mean, which is 100. And that equals 15 plus 100 equals 115. In other words, somebody who has a z-score of 1.5 in this distribution has a raw score of 115. In the next video, we'll talk about how you can use this z distribution to calculate how much of the population falls within certain tails or within certain intervals of the z distribution.